So for the session is Fires Mayor. He's a media relation content creator from Fame Media. So can we have a big round of applause and have him on the stage? Our third speaker for the session is Leanne Villomore. She's a content creator, marketer, paid TV. Can we have a big round of applause for her and have him on the stage? And the moderator and the Gina Margaret Tiger. She's a founder and chief marketing officer with B Digital Creative. So can we have a big round of applause for her and have her on the stage. So very interesting topic coming up related to video marketing. So I'm sure you guys must be showing some video practical examples. So let's get it going. Thank you. You can just check your mic if they're working. Yeah. Test, test. Uh, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. All right, so let's get it going. Over to you guys. Yes, hello, uh, hello everyone. Hello, beautiful people. So we're here to talk about the evolution of video marketing and talk about the strategies for to engage an audience in the post-pandemic world. So uh, to start with, I am Lian Villamore. I am a marketer and content creator. Uh, I have been doing. I have started doing content creation in a YouTube channel with my sister at Bay TV. And I've been in the marketing industry for over 15 years. So the content that we do in my channel is uh, more about uh, travel and accommodation tips and hacks. So what we aim is to give an ounce of knowledge to our viewers or a piece of uh, savings and of course, we also aim to add value to them as well. So, okay, to start with, here with me are also experts in video marketing. And uh, I would like them to give an introduction of themselves as well. Let's uh, start with, with us, lady. ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, thank you so much. My name is Gina Margaret Tiger, and I have about 13 years of experience in digital marketing starting off really early with just website design and development. And then I got into an internship where I was doing SEO for about two years. And then from there, I got into just overall digital marketing as paid, organic. And then fast forward to now, I'm involved in influencer marketing. And I feel like my journey has grown over the years because I started from like the beginning to realizing this whole sphere called digital marketing and understanding how everything works and falling in love with the process. So today I'm going to just share some of my unique experiences and strategies and insights on how video is literally changing the world every single second and how you as a business or person can tap into that. Thank you. Thank you very much. And of course, uh, I have two gentlemen sitting beside me as well. C can you give a brief introduction of yourself? Sure. Thank you, Lian. Okay, my name is Fawaz Mio. Uh, I believe, can you put out the picture for my, I think, my TikTok, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and also, I put up my name card on each table. So basically what I do is I do uh, my own personal for my personal page. Uh, I do uh, social media. Like I said, I'm, I'm influencer ish because I don't really dive into the world of influencers with the with a very large crowd because uh, as much as it's fun it sounds to be have too many followers is not that beautiful because it can be scary sometimes. So what I do on the side is I do take clients. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the term of ghostwriter, uh, I'm a ghost influencer. 
So I help other people to become influencer. Uh, sometimes like companies, sometimes personal, uh, whoever want to be personally you to, to become influencer. Okay, uh, I think that's it. That's all, that's all about me. Uh, please take my name card. Thank you very much for us. Okay, and last but not the least, we have um, Sharia. Yeah. Hello, hi, nice meeting you guys. Uh, that's a long name to pronounce, but you can just call me Surya. I'm from VML, uh, although we're going to be talking about video engagement. Uh, VML, we believe in a connected brand experience, so we do everything. So it's a, you know, it's a merger of companies, so we do from digital, on-ground, branding, CI, and everything that a brand needs. So video is just a part of it. Uh, so VML, we are in over 60 markets right now. And yeah, in Malaysia, we are the regional hub for British American tobacco and also the Southeast Asian hub for Coca-Cola company. Uh, yep, let's start, I guess. Okay, since most of you are already familiar with all these experts beside me here, I think let's begin. So let's get down to business. The first thing that I think we can address is how has video marketing evolved over the past decades and what role did the pandemic play in shaping these changes? Who wants to start? Oh, okay, I think, okay. okay. I think maybe I forgot to say I'm from the creative team, so my answer may not be very technical. So I, I believe when it comes to engagement, right, it doesn't matter whether it's pre, during, or post-pandemic, right? I think a very, I mean, like we, we talk a lot about the stages, like how you strategically place your ads and all that. But in the end of the day, what do you put on those space, right? And I think the good thing about the pandemic, I mean, like there's a lot of horrible things, but the, the good thing is, I don't know if you remember, there's a parody of how brands sound just the same during COVID. Unprecedented, you know, in this difficult time, we are with you and so on and so forth. It's so boring, right? And it makes brand realize that they are all swimming in the sea of sameness. And I think there's a lot of, you know, change in how, you know, brands behave uh, whether it's digital in any touch point, right? They need to find their own unique voice and roll with it to avoid being in the sea of sameness. Uh, so what you're saying is more of like identify yourself. Yeah, create your own personality yes. as a brand, right? Then you roll with it. That's how you become engagement or else no one will remember you for what you are. And stand out, right? Yeah. Right. Do you agree? <laughs> I agree. And just to add to that, I think the pandemic sort of like exposed how we humans can be creative. And I'm talking from a TikTok perspective because that is when the platform blew up from literally being, you know, a basic platform to like one of the leading platforms worldwide. And it also gave uh, people a room to share and express who they are and how they feel without any judgment. And how business or corporate comes into play, especially post-pandemic, using TikTok, is because the algorithm on TikTok is very organic and it doesn't have any specific measures compared to Facebook and Instagram. It was very organic, so anyone could share, anyone could be seen, and anyone could be heard. So I think the pandemic or post-pandemic uh, role of video marketing has, has tripled from before pandemic. Yes, I totally agree. I think uh, after the pandemic, most people already are already familiar with all these channels uh, in video marketing, especially during the lockdown when this has become their form of entertainment and um, education as well. And right now, I think they're, it's more engaging for other people. What can you say about it? Uh, okay, sure. Uh, the pandemic does affect uh, even the social media in, the, in terms of content creation itself because uh, people spend like, I think by a year and a half, is it, for in, in a lockdown? Yeah. Malaysia, two years yeah. and a half. Malaysia like more like PKPB, PK, like too many lockdown in Malaysia happen. 
and uh, we do feel uh, different when we making content because people become more focused on your content because basically people are doing nothing at home and watching contents every day and people become more mature in selecting content and they become very very selective and if you uh, if you keep on creating the same content what others do and people also start judging you also so uh, it is also pushes the content creator to become more creative and have uh, our own identity and companies branding also have their own persona to bring in the social media world i think that's just just to add another point i think uh i think one of the most interesting thing when it comes to business uh on social media right remember this hashtag tiktok made me buy it right so yeah. the the role of you know from social media video to conversion to sales becomes a lot closer right it used to be like oh you know like it's just a presentation of a product demo and so on and so forth but you know we, with all this you know tech and you know and social experience being sped up right e everything is just on supercharge i think Exactly, because uh, during the pandemic, we become isolated with each other. But with social media, with all these platforms like TikTok, YouTube, we felt more connected with each other. And yes. us being um, sharing our own unique stories, our own unique content, makes it more uh, makes people more connected to to us. Like for. Uh, in a brand perspective and as a personal content creator perspective. Uh, do you agree? <laughs> yes, 100%. <laughs> okay, so another question would be, what do you think are the key elements of successful video marketing in a post-pandemic landscape and how can businesses adapt to these trends? Would, would, who would like okay, to start? Maybe I can start. Uh, I think a uh, few of the presenter before us uh, already give the formula of uh, successful content creation. Uh, I think Shaza, I think, and also Zoe also shared uh, about how we have to do content. Uh, we have to to be consistent, uh, and then it's not about. Uh, for example, if you have a one brand, you need to have the quantity first. You need to have the consistency. Then you get the data. After you get the data, then you can uh, how to manipulate data, and you can control more the uh, what what kind of story that you want to bring and the narrative that you want to bring to your customers and also your potential clients. Uh, and then the consistency consistency is the key, and also uh, I think the persona that you are bring we are bringing to your your brands and also your company. What kind of persona that you, that you are offering? you have to have the wow factor and before even you don't have to like brainstorm for 20 days to find what is the x factor you just have to go first do the videos first do the content first do the do the uh, writing first and then the x factor you will find along the way because the beauty of uh, having these uh, followers that like your content for example uh, now I think I think everybody familiar with web 3.0 concept I think I'm assuming everybody is familiar web 3.0 concept is uh, people uh, right now we are decentralizing for example I ha I can have my own follower Surya can have his own follower Lian can have her own follower and also Sheena, Sheena can have her own follower so but but then again their follower can also be my follower the most important thing is how do you create your own environment of content and how do you market your branding yeah and just to add to that i think when it comes to video it's all about storytelling so we have images where it's just a still image then video is a concept of those images just playing back and forth and now if you have that opportunity to tell your story as a business or as a brand you first need to put yourself in your consumer's shoes have them tell or understand what you're trying to give to them so you can speak from a current consumer or customer or anyone potentially interested in what you're offering the moment you understand all of those needs what their frustrations are what their pain points are then you can curate content 
addressing all of those needs. So the content doesn't necessarily have to say, oh, I'm selling shoes, or I'm selling this and that, but you can essentially make your content about the comfortability of wearing a specific shoe. And if you wear that specific shoe, this is what you benefit from wearing that specific shoe. That way, you create content that naturally or organically market your product. Yes, I think um, what she said makes sense. To be able to be uh, relatable and relevant, you must resonate with your target audience. Uh, your target audience must resonate with you and must relate on your unique story so that you can stay relevant. Uh, I think that is what Gina is trying to drive on. Uh, I, I want to also uh, listen to Surya's take on this. I, I think a lot of, I think especially marketeers, and I put myself in this marketeers box, when we talk about top of mind, right, a lot of the time when we make ads, for example, we're doing ads for Nissan, a car, or, you know, we, we tend to look at, you know, our competitor is Toyota, BMW, Mercedes, other cars. They are not. When it comes to top of mind, your competition is Blackpink, uh, you know, Stranger Things, what, whatever hottest Netflix series, you know, the football, national football team. Nobody likes ads. Right? No, I, I make ads, I can say this. Nobody likes it unless it's interesting. So for me, the key is always, whether it's pre, post, during, if it's not interesting, no one's going to give a damn. No one's going to pay attention to you. And another key thing, and be single-minded, please do not put a leaflet in a 15-second video. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, I think the initial part is to catch their attention. So for us video marketers, I think um, the, the challenge is to be able to uh, give our audience high quality visuals, correct? So that we can capture their attention. And another thing, uh, just to summarize what um, this expert has mentioned, I think we also should have heartwarming stories, right? So heartwarming stories that are relatable and our audience can also relate to it. And at the same time, we must be authentic at the same time. And hardcore authentic in a sense, like so that we will be able to stand out on all these contents and all this um, platform that's trying to capture the attention of our target audience. Uh, I, do you think I summarized it well? You did, you did. <laughs> okay, so moving forward, we also would like to um, touch on the power of storytelling. So would you like to share examples of successful video marketing campaigns that effectively used storytelling to connect with audiences on a deeper level? Uh, yes. Okay, Gina, you uh, start first. I will go. So there is this ad by Kelvin Klein. I don't know if you guys have seen it. it. It was just an ad, but it blew up on TikTok. And I think based on that campaign, they, it was just a simple guy just walking around in his underwear. And how that video blew up is because, first of all, he was good looking and he was charming. And that spoke to the ladies, obviously, because most of the people that were sharing were ladies. Then fast forward to scrutinizing the whole campaign, they realized that because there's a lot of like user-generated content, especially on TikTok, they, solo they followed the, simil the, the similar format of making it look like somebody was just walking around maybe in their house or they're going to the shop, and it was very relatable because it spoke to all the human senses. It was visually appealing, and the music that they used for that video was relatable, and people quickly adapted to that, and I think that is one example of a very effective, successful video marketing campaign. Okay, thank you, Gina. I think, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, a, a good example of, um, of brand marketing where people can see themselves 
in wearing that brand, being that the person who represents the the person, uh, a, a, a normal person that's going to wear this brand, which is Calvin Klein. Yeah. Uh, do you have any more examples, Fawaz? Yes, uh, sure. Uh, if I may share, if uh, if you are in YouTube partner program, uh, you're gonna get a newsletter every month from YouTube slash Google. And YouTube has uh, have been pushing the creators to do more storytelling since 2018. So if uh, maybe you can see at the screen the Ashraf channel, that, that's not my channel, not, not even my client. I just it's a it's a good example of how he been telling. He just telling stories. It's not even his story. It's other people's stories. So somehow he's followed almost like one million, and also like a big brand like Apple, they are using stories. And even marketing using stories also uh, also have been practiced by the <coughs> the um, how the tobacco industries. How the tobacco industries they they they're not using their story. They're using other people's stories. They get into movies. They get into Hollywood. And if I may highlight in Malaysia, we have this uh, university university industry Selangor Unicel. They're using uh, teenagers series to promote their universities. So this kind of uh, content marketing is is it, it is going to still be relevant until even after the pandemic. Only the way how you rep, you present the content uh, that's the only difference. But 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 the thing is, it it, it will be still relevant until I think maybe. I mean, it, it, it has been few decades. Storytelling will still be relevant. It's just a matter on how do you present your content. Uh, yes, I agree with that. But I, I just to add up on what Fawaz has mentioned, I think you should get to know more about your target audience. Like for example, sure. um, uh, like what you mentioned, the teenager who created a story, yes. uh, uh, which is storytelling. Um, you must, uh, for, for a brand, I must get to know what is the demographics of my target audience. And then after that, that's when you create a story uh, an advertisement that yes. is a cr that creates a story that resonates to the target audience that you are um, uh, that you want to drive the message to. Yes, yes. Yeah, exactly. like for, yeah, like what she mentioned. Like if m if Cli Calvin Klein's target market is a, a young professional, a male young professional, then maybe. Uh, create a story of a young professional male yeah. that uses Cl Calvin Klein. True, and I also I also want to add to say, the approach can be to just use um, that platform to target ladies, for example, because yes. it blew up from the ladies' side that it got all the guys asking, "Why is this trending?" And then that way, indirectly, they also targeted their audience. Oh, through, okay. Through so it's trend. a tool, tool issue. So it was yeah. a reverse engineering ah. type of uh, campaign. Oh, ah, yeah. okay. So it blew up with the ladies first, and then suddenly the guys wanted to wear this. Yes. Kind. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I also find one more thing. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I go on, I, um, One interesting ad that um, I find very creative of a brand is the real beauty campaign of Dove. I think that was mentioned a while ago during one of the panel discussion as well. So uh, that campaign, um, uh, they, they also feature different kinds of women. Uh, women from different kinds of ages. Women that have different colors of hair and different kinds of um, preference. And when it comes to uh, relationships, so I think uh, the real beauty campaign like uh, touch on the different aspects of um, womanhood, <laughs> in a sense that that's why most of their target audience was able to relate to the brand, and at the same time, okay, uh, I'm having a real beauty when I use dubs. So this is what this is the message that drives to their audience, that they drive to, towards their audience. That's one of my favorite campaigns, yeah, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it came from a very simple brief. I was lucky to actually hear a talk from the CMO of Unilever, Fernando wow. Machado. Uh, the brief is very simple. 
it's not three page it's one line as a brand i want to make every woman feel more beautiful wow how do you do that it's a challenge the the executive creative director is like came back to the office and was like we have an award winning brief now we need to have an award winning work like yes. oh damn but i think just to add to all this yeah. right for for me the strategy when it comes to storytelling yeah is is in one line as well find the most interesting thing to say and say it in the most interesting way right so i i like to share a piece of my work i ask ayush to stand by to play later but yeah. i i i tell you the narrative first right a lot yeah. of the time this is an example yeah. uh in malaysia our independence day you know is a time it's like a super bowl where there's a lot of you know people do festive film for example and we don't want i can't be a contradiction to myself so i don't want to swim in the sea of sameness so kfc is actually it's an american brand but it has been around in malaysia for like since 1973 so we have nicknames like in australia is mecca right that's the name for mcdonald's in malaysia it's called kepchi the kernel sanders is called ato which means grandpa so for malaysia day for kfc we found what we want to say the single minded messaging right as an american brand we want to say we are malaysian we don't care what you say about us we are malaysian and we want to own that and once we got that clarity we think of like okay like what would be the in what would be an interesting way to do it so first level thinking we would just do a film but what we did to do this story of how malaysian kfc is we create we tell the story through a streetwear collection we create fashion right that is built on this narrative of KFC is Malaysian here. Right? So maybe I can play just it's a short video because we've been talking a lot maybe it's good to play a video. Uh <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so we we, we did that, uh, and to our surprise, because KFC in Malaysia is we also trying to solve another business problem because KFC is being seen as a family brand, and we want to you know appeal to the youngsters. That's why again it's important to know your audience, right? Whose heart are you trying to win? Then then you can tell the right story yeah. properly, right? Know what's your game, right? Don't just shoot blindly. Right for this exercise, we have a campaign, and like we were so lucky that it was featured in High Beast. You know, like these are the like the publication that would never talk about KFC, and because of that, we are featured in where the Gen Zs were. So yay! Oops. Didn't mean to mic drop, but yeah. <laughs> I just want to add a little bit about the simplicity of the content. We like like uh, Surya said. Um, your content have to be so simple that everybody can relate i think everybody know the advertisement about bentley A asmr you know that bentley 
You know the girl? Everybody, everybody saw the ads, right? I think you just can Google Bentley ASMR. So that simple uh, advertisement, I think from uh, it's not from officially Bent, it's not made by Bentley officially. It was it was made by I think like uh, a car that sell Bentley. Uh, sorry, a company that sell car. Uh, so it is so simple that everybody can relate and everybody start to have fun with that concept. So uh, as you can see, the advertisement it somewhat it doesn't make sense, but people can relate and people like having fun. And also, if you guys can see for this this one, jualan angin. It is maybe like a funny videos, but somehow this this uh, this kind of thing is it is very simple. But I have to highlight this thing. It's about uh, sometimes when you are doing content, don't get too attached to data and statistic, uh, because uh, sometimes it is I don't know what, but the human factor of the content itself. Uh, for example, this jualan uh, jualan angin, it it has view like forty four millions. So uh, if you can do basically the sim, the more simple the the content is, the more people can easily relate to you, to your to your brand or to your product. Yeah, basically, I think um, just like what Sherry has mentioned, uh, you must be where you're uh, uh, in the place or the position where your target audience is at, yes. and um, create a compelling story with with it so that people can relate to it. Also, right. it's, it's very important to not look at your competitors as the benchmark. Exactly. Yeah. That's, I think, a common mistake, not just marketeers, even, even as creative myself, like, oh, so what are the other brands doing? And like, no, don't do that. Like, yeah. treat yourself better. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Exactly. It's not more of like competing with other brands. Yeah. It's telling your own story. Like, like just to yeah. add on what uh, Mio said earlier, right? a simple trick when it comes to storytelling, yeah. right backward. It's easy to start a story. It's a lot harder to find a nice ending. Right? If you crack that ending, you will have a good storytelling. Yes, yes. Uh, to add to what he mentioned, start with a conclusion. Start with the message that you want to drive towards your audience. And then after that, you, you, can, you can drive your story circulating around this conclusion that you want to drive into. Yes, Jimmy. Okay, and uh, to add to everything, driving everything with passion, um, understanding what the story is going to say, and allowing people to digest it as you are trying to communicate. I think that's very valuable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so too. Okay, so to wrap up our segment, um, can everyone give one takeaway for our audiences regarding this topic on evolution of video marketing? Uh, any message that uh, you want to uh, want your our audiences to take away after a session. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll go. So video is growing every single day and as much as we all doing social media, we're doing SEO, email marketing, etc. Video has the highest engagement rate. It also has the highest conversion rate simply because it you can see what somebody's trying to share. And for that reason, you have to be able to make sure people understand what you're trying to say. And that way, you can communicate with your audience and your future audience. So it is very important to invest in actually creating videos for your brand, your company, on a weekly basis. I know it, it takes a lot of uh, work, it, it needs a lot of budget, but it is possible. and the more you stay consistent, the better the brand grows. So yeah, that's what I know. Thank you very much, Gina. Okay, how about you, Fawaz? Uh, I think uh, after the pandemic, um, just like be, be as creative as you can be and be simple. And also I, w I really would like to highlight about uh, data and algorithm. Don't get too attached to it. 
if I may say, uh, if I if I if I may compare, data and algorithms sort of like your big brother that you hate. You you have to love them, but at the same time you're gonna hate them because sometimes we do everything the data and the algorithm said, but it doesn't work. So the data algorithm come back to blame come back to blaming you you are doing the wrong thing and if you doesn't do according to the data and the, according to the algorithm somehow the marketing hits they're going to say you are lucky but then again as a conclusion that i can give is get the data but don't, don't get too attached to it don't get too attached to algorithm as uh, as, a, as it is it has been shared earlier uh, google changes algorithm every 12 minutes i think if i'm not mistaken so the algorithm changes every day and people are changing every day their, their interest is changing every day every single second so be yourself uh, find the x factor of your brand and your products then you say uh yes uh last but not least sorry avoid the sea of sameness when everyone's zigging don't zig along you zag uh also Trust your creative director. Yeah, that's a yes. big one. <laughs> okay, so to wrap up, um, for, for um, things, uh, the three things I want you to take away for a vi vi uh, video marketing is to have hardcore authenticity, have a heartwarming story, and visual visual that is high quality so that's what i want you to take away when regards in, in regards to creating video content yeah so that's all beautiful people thank you very much Just for, for thanks for listening to our here. podcast <laughs> yeah. so can we have a big round of applause for all the key speakers so do we have uh, the question from the audience, a very interesting topic related to video marketing and the evolution of it? All right, we have a question. Okay. Hi guys, I just have one question. Uh, some video content makers are focusing on only shots uh, and they are not like looking for the videos. Like, is it because uh, they want to gain followers or views early? Like, you know? Who wants to answer? Um, okay, so let me try and, and answer your question. So, short form videos, because we are human, our attention span is very little. And having a video that is longer than 10 minutes as to get somebody's attention or trying to hear, make them hear what you're saying, it, it doesn't really work. But you can hook them with 10 to 15 seconds. And from that moment, you can sort of like repurpose them with longer form videos. So I think maybe to answer your question, people use short form videos because they can get us by our attention. Immediately, that first hook in the first three seconds will get whoever you want and they become an impression, they count as reach. But your message, or whatever you're trying to say, ultimately becomes the conversion. Yes, I do agree with Gina. And for short videos, for example, like uh, new products, for example, I do suggest using shorts. And you guys know the hook, line, and sinker. So shorts is basically for hook, and line and sinker is for the long video. And also, you can tell more, much more narrative in the long video. I do still believe we need the long video, and uh, because I, but then short videos for hook for for immediate followers and immediate attention for what we are bringing to the market. Yeah, to add to that, um, I think right now, what is the trend is more of uh, like short form, short form which is concise, compelling. And comprehensive drive the uh, drive your message straight away it must be concise comprehensive and compelling yeah that's for me it's true I just add a simple answer that's a time and place for everything when you have a good product you don't need to say much like this three-layer burger that price at one dollar it's insane right six seconds will do Six seconds of nothing will do. Just that burger and the price. Boom. Done. Sometimes you need 
to engage you want to Smart. tell a brand story you want to tell a brand belief right you know that's where you create stuff you know that is more in the content category to be the six seconds those are ads those are ads like you put your stuff there to be seen to sell right real engagement is something else I hope we. I hope that answered your question. <laughs> Hi. Uh, so to follow up on the responses that was provided earlier, right? How do you maintain customer retention? Yes, you retain customer in the first three seconds with your uh, hook, line, and sinker. But when it comes to maintaining customer uh, uh, loyalty, keep them coming back. There's only so much you can do with trends, right? <laughs> and trend jacking and staying relevant. So how do you circumvent that, keep cost, uh, audiences engaged? All right, so you, you sort of create a plan or like a series. So for example, the month of February, you want to get people to sign up for Valentine's, right? Or subscribe for Valentine's. Then you, you give them a story. So you first hook them in then you measure according to just the engagement rate of those videos. It's always a constant journey of trial and error with A, B testing and seeing what is working, what is not. And with consistency, you will definitely get to that point where you realize out of the 20 videos that we shot and published, the last five performed, how did those perform? Or the first 10 performed, how did those 10 perform? and we sort of like lost everybody else along the way. So it's, it's definitely conversion rate optimization that comes into play right now because we have it on SEO, on websites, but it definitely applies even to video as well. Okay, to add to that, um, how do we retain attention, right? So to retain attention, I'll give you three R's also. You must have, you must be relevant your content must be relevant, relatable, and ready. So uh, you must have a content that is readily available for your target audience. So whenever, because nowadays people are busy. So your content must be readily available once they are ready to consume your content. It must be relatable and it must be relevant. So yeah. And that's consistent. Yeah. Uh, correct. So yeah, that's a three R's. <laughs> To retain attention. <laughs> All right, very quickly to Alia. Thank you, Mitali. Sorry to take your time. So basically, my question is, since this is a session about video marketing, uh, we have seen over the recent past, uh, the video marketing or the short format of video, let's say Reels or TikTok, has been uh, booming like anything across the globe, right? My question is, uh, there is always a saturation point to anything that comes to the market. And I believe the video marketing's saturation point is already there. How far do you guys see uh, this video marketing, video format of marketing should be taking us uh, along the way? Uh, or like, you know, for how many years further we can count on video marketing? Or is there any other possible marketing ways coming up according to you? That's my question. Okay, I'll, I'll go. So from my point of view or my perspective, I think this is just the beginning. Why we are on our phones for the longest time than ever before. And what this means is as much as we have the social media platforms, we have the blogs, we have these uh, news channels, Netflix, all of these um, platforms available. We are constantly going to watch more videos. And this also includes um, interactive um, forms of, of content, which involve, um, um, I'd say like virtual um, participation. And the bottom line of all of this is as much as there's so many videos being posted in this present moment, how you capture your audience is based on how unique your story is. You understand what the product is, 
and you understand how it serves a purpose to the receiving person, how are you going to tell them that? And that is what makes your offering unique. It can be video, it can be images, but because video, as humans, we have a short attention span, video is only going to get bigger. It's only going to get bigger. It's also the easiest way to be entertaining. Uh, if I may add, uh, I think the next step will be l doing live. Live uh, because most, uh, I think, big brands should start doing more live session because people are doing sales like millions doing lives. Yeah. So start doing live. Uh, you're gonna, it is it is already a big thing, but somehow I did not see any big brand actively doing live because people are doing sales like crazy doing live. So live is, I think, uh, maybe we we should focus on that lah. Uh. And also, uh, we, during live, you have to pre-plan the content because to maintain the engagement and people retention during the whole time you're doing live for 30 minutes or maybe one hour. So I think it's about live session. Uh. I think to add to, add to that also, um, I think most of the platforms nowadays are, uh, as the video marketing evolves, um, users or con content uh, uh, receivers wants to be involved. So nowadays, these platforms such as YouTube or Instagram, they have um, broadcast, Instagram has broadcast channels nowadays. YouTube um, allows you to have polls, question and answers. So in that way, video content creators can address the needs or what is the requirement of these viewers that they have. So it's more about creating a community out of your target audience. And these platforms can help us as long as we get familiar with all these channels that we are using as video content creators, we can engage our audience. So as video marketing evolves, I think we should also involve our users our um, viewers as well. Yeah. Does, does that address your question? <laughs> Thank you. Ah. No, I don't <laughs> want to add anything. <laughs> okay, question for my favorite creative director. So, <laughs> creating content, a lot of steps and processes, logical, but for someone to be creative, um, how how does how does one come up with content that's creative? You said mentioned don't be it's the same. So, what are your processes? Maybe you can just give us some simple steps. I, I think it's different because I work for brands compared to my friends over here. The content creator that's a different role. They are managing their brand, right? I'm doing both. Right. So, uh, yeah, I don't have to manage my brand as much. Yeah. You know, some might disagree disagree with that but I think when you're managing brand because you know we, we, we work with like full-on brand development brand creation and so on and so forth before you dive into all this it's very important to know who you are as a brand that's why to address one of the questions earlier as well so what do you do with trends right you what you want to avoid is your brand to be schizophrenic Right, jumping into any trend, whether it's staying true to the brand personality or not. We need to know who the brand is. Then we can play, we can maneuver, we can hijack whatever trend without losing what we stand for and who we are. You know, like, you know, so consistency is one of the things that is key, right? That's how you become consistent. Like, as a brand, right? that has a strong personality, say, Wendy's in the USA or like even Coke, right? Whether I go into a telenovela, whether I go into sports, whether I go into any territory, I go into TikTok, I go into Twitch, my personality should not change. I adapt to everywhere I go. Without this clear guide of who you are, it's very easy for your brand to be schizophrenic, and in the end, nobody remembers who you are. So to me, that is the start of ev every process before we dwell into, oh, I need to hijack on this trend. But what do I say as this kind of person, you know, on this trend? If I want to do hijack on, you know, Asia Cup results, 
you know, different brands would hijack it differently based on their personality. I don't know if that makes sense to you. If, yes, if I may add something, uh, previously Surya said, uh, work backwards. Uh, I totally agree. We go, uh, what do you have the end of uh, the end in mind? It's begin, begin with end in mind, I think, the word. So uh, in between that, the hook and the line, you can go schizophrenic, but within the compound of uh, not, uh, within a safe compound of your content and what you are trying to deliver. Because we, I think the surprise, the, the uh, how to say, um, the wow factor or the surprise factor within that one minute video is very important to gain people retention. If you can, if, uh, I think you also a content creator, you can see the audience retention, something it is easily can be dropped. It's either like this, if it is like this, it's good. It's like swap like this, it, it's not really good. Lah. So basically, you have to go uh, schizophrenic, but within a safe compound. If that makes sense, I don't know. <laughs> all right, so thank you to all the key speakers for the wonderful session. So give me a big round of applause for all of them. I request all the speakers for the group photograph. First we have Fawaz, come on guys, great round of four for Fawaz. Then we have Surya, Then we have Leah and Wilmore. And at the last we have Gina.